It is National Signing Day. The LSU coaching staff has signed 19 players during the early signing period. That was back in December, and they have room for six more players to complete the class of 2020. Three commits expected to put pen to paper today. Four-star running back Cavantre Bradford from Texas, four-star wide receiver Alex Adams, cornerback Dwight McLaughlin from Texas as well is expected to sign. The two uncommitted prospects to watch today is five-star defensive end Jordan Birch, who has a noon announcement from his high school, Hammond High School in Columbia, South Carolina. It's LSU in South Carolina, the two hats on the table. LSU feels good, but it's an out-of-state recruit. Who knows what can happen? Four-star defensive tackle McKinley Jackson from Mississippi, He's making his announcement at 9.30. It seems like all signs are pointing towards Tuscaloosa there. We'll ask him, Body, coming up here in a couple of minutes. Yeah, it's it's really, and, and for that reason, it is all about Jordan Birch today in terms of whether or not LSU fans are going to get a pleasant surprise. I, I would say maybe if you just want to be happy, temper your expectations, expect the three four-stars to sign. and Fire then, Ogeron? Yeah, look, if you get Birch, then it's a little, little bonus, a little juice. Yeah, right. LSU senior guard Skylar Mays is one of 10 candidates for the 2020 Jerry West Shooting Guard of the Year Award. The award recognizes the top two guard in Division I's men's college basketball. LSU back on the wood tonight play, uh, playing Vanderbilt. Then they'll play at Auburn on Saturday. Auburn beat Arkansas in Fayetteville last night in overtime. Vanderbilt is 8-13 and 0-8 and in SEC play, but played well last week at Rupp Arena for the thir- uh, first 30 minutes before losing to Kentucky 71-62. They were down by Florida 61-55 on Saturday. Will Wade was talking to the media and speaking about Vanderbilt earlier this week. Getting ready to head to Vanderbilt. They shoot uh, they shoot a ton of threes. Like 46% of their shots in league are almost th- or, or, or th- almost 46% of their shots in league are threes. They also draw a lot of fouls. They draw the third most fouls in the league. So and, and they're, they're able to get to the foul line and draw a lot of fouls. They also don't foul very much on defense, so that, you know they've got some they got some good qualities. You got to be able to win the free throw line against them. Uh, you got to be able to contest their threes, contest their threes while also guarding them without uh, without fouling them. Uh, like any great coach, Will Wade trying to find the good qualities in a team that would uh, seem to have none. You mentioned 0 8 this year. Combined with the SEC record 0-18 of last season, Jordy, this is a Vanderbilt team that has lost 26 Ooh. SEC games in a row. And they're squaring up with a team that's won 13 consecutive, including 12 in a row on the road. Barring a disaster, LSU will roll tonight. And then I see the story that their uh, their athletic director, Malcolm Turner, resigned after only one year on the job. He was... His hiring, I remember, was very much applauded. He was the 2018 NBA G League president. He came from the NBA G League and was oh, hired wow. by Vanderbilt to be their athletic director just in 2018 and only after a year on the job. He's the one that brought Jerry Stackhouse in because Stackhouse was the G League coach of the year when he was over there, brought him in to coach Vanderbilt. So who knows what the future holds for yeah. Stackhouse there in Nashville. Either way, LSU plays Vanderbilt tonight. It'll be an 8 o'clock tip-off for the Tigers and Commodores 7.30 pregame with Chris Blair and John Brady sitting courtside at Memorial Gymnasium on Eagle 98.1. LSU baseball for the sixth consecutive year. All of the LSU baseball games may be viewed via television or online as the Tigers will enjoy tremendous exposure for the 2020 season. LSU is scheduled to make 16 television network appearances during the regular season. Six on ESPNU, six on the SEC Network, three on AT&T Sportsnet. I guess that'll be the weekend that they're in Houston for the, uh, the Shriners Classic and one on Cox Sports Television. So LSU should be easy to keep up with the Tigers this year. T-Bob told you leading into headlines that Giannis Antetokounmpo had 34-17 and as the Milwaukee Bucks defeated the New Orleans Pelicans last night, 120-108. Next up for the Pelicans, they visit the Bulls on Thursday. Got a front row seat last night at just how good the Bucks are. Yeah, yeah, so the, the, my, my NBA knowledge is all viewed through the prism of the Pelicans. I, I don't watch a ton of games. The Pelicans are not involved. And to so that reason, you know, I see all the Bucks highlights and you hear about them all the time, but I never really sat down and watched them. But damn, that Milwaukee team is complete. I mean, they have size, right? They're massive, yet they're still able to defend the perimeter. They're able to run in the era of small ball. They can shoot it from outside. Middleton and Intentacampo are as dominant and efficient 
uh, two as teammates as you're going to find. Two frontline All-Stars. And, I mean, here's the deal is uh, Middleton averages 25 a game. He plays 29 minutes a game. Wow. Giannis plays like 31 or 32. So it just shows you how deep they are, too. They're not even having to run these guys ragged. It is, uh, and, oh, and they're on pace to set the NBA record for margin of victory. They're winning their games by an average of 12.4 points per game in the NBA. So uh, that was was a great learning moment for Zion and really for this young Pelican team as to what true NBA greatness looks like. Zion played 32 minutes. He had 20 points and seven boards. He got to the free throw line 14 times where he was 10 of 14 on the night. Brandon Ingram, New Orleans All-Star, had 36 minutes, played 36 minutes. Scored 32 points in his uh, in his 36 minutes of action. As we said, Pelicans back on the floor versus the Bulls on Thursday night. Weird story out of college football. Mark D'Antoni, after th- uh, 13 seasons of leading Michigan State and becoming the program's all-time leader in coaching wins, decided to step away and retire Tuesday afternoon, the day before National Signing Day. Talk about a surprising decision. D'Antoni's announcement Also comes while he is a part of a federal lawsuit brought on by former staffer Curtis Blackwell. The former Michigan State recruiting director is suing the head coach, former athletic director Mark Hollis, and uh, President Luanna Simon, and two university police detectives for wrongful termination and unlawful arrest. D'Antoni picked up $4 million dollars. With his uh, with one of the stipulations in his contract back on January fifteenth, but deciding to retire after thirteen seasons on the job. Yeah, that's the best part of all of this is that he's saying that you know this is the time of the year when you really reset the team, and yeah. I just didn't have the juice, and I thought the timing was right to leave. No, like if you want to talk about the right timing, you're one of these great coaches. The right timing is after the regular season game, right? The last regular season game, they get to celebrate your legacy heading into the bowl game. They get to prepare the next coach. They get, they, they get to reassure the recruiting class, give them options as to what to do. No, the day before signing day is almost the worst time to make this sort of decision. Uh, but it does make a lot of sense given that, as Jordy mentioned, on January 15th, he got a $4 million retention bonus mm. for still being the head coach of Michigan State. And it uh, doesn't matter if you leave three weeks later, that bonus still his. Nice work. Well, I was here on January 15th. Yeah, nice work, Mark. Got to love it.